G'day YouTube, how the heck are we doing? It is Foul Play here, and we're back for another match in this Pioneer League. Uh, we won the die roll versus a tie pen, and this hand is a keep. So we're gonna go ahead and keep it in a planes and pass to our opponent. Looks like we're versing a human's deck, a blue-white human's deck, very interesting. All right, so we'll play this on green side. We'll play out our SRAM. We have our Mox Amber here, and then we can Ethereal Armor on the SRAM, getting that card draw trigger. That's why we've got the Mox Ambers in there, because we're only running two Mox Ambers, so it doesn't happen super frequently. Because this is a legendary artifact as well, I'm not sure we can go up on copies hugely. Uh, our opponent with a second recruitment officer, a Kithion. All right, well, that's kind of interesting. So our opponent is more of like a tribal deck than anything else. Uh, we'll start with Ethereal Armor because we're going to want to resolve that. All right, well, that's just a fantastic draw. Hitting that Vigilance on our creature. This should hopefully be a like just a win pending removal. Uh, we've got that Mox Amber tapping for mana as well. And I think we've played all our lands for turn. How crazy is this? Turn three attacking for 16 on a SRAM. That has to be the high roll of this card. Opponents on four. It's going to be very difficult to attack into us. Maybe they have removal for our creature. Hey, look, fading cope, returning it to our hand. That's pretty annoying. Uh, going to get card draw off the audacity. Um, we do have the light pause as well. Our opponent has actually done this sorcery speed, which they didn't need to do. I guess they're trying to invalidate our blocking when it, you're, every you attack with five or more soldiers, creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and flying until end of turn. Uh, realistically, we just untap with light paws, give it vigilance, and kill our opponent, right? We get Sentinel's Eyes from the graveyard as a guarantee. Uh, we can give, like... Sure, he's giving this indestructible. I think we get there with SRAM because we've got at least two auras. We can cast both of them. Uh, let's tap our mana correctly here. Send those eyes from the graveyard. Uh, giving our creature like flying isn't really going to help us hugely. We might as well get the trample. Our opponent's creature has flying anyway. Uh, so now we can go for red, hammer hand, trigger. This creature can't block. Our opponent concedes. All right, well, that's pretty straightforward. We can even get an ethereal armor to do even more damage if we needed to. Looks like we're versing a soldier's deck. Uh, I'll see if I can find a list and we'll talk in sideboarding. All right, so it looks like this opponent has a slightly different list. Oh, this uh, deck list is slightly different to what our opponent is running. In this list, they've got access to Brutal Cathar, um, Thalia. I think that's like the main creatures. Still got like the Kithian. This one doesn't have Gideon. This is like super budget. Uh, portable hole in the sideboard. Sure they can have some other white creature removal. We saw the bounce effect there from them as well. All right, so here in this matchup, we definitely want Hushbringer. There's an argument for Besage you and portable hole. I'm not going to bring it in because I believe it's overboarding. Obvious boards out are going to be our generous visitor. After that becomes a little bit dicier. I'm going to minus like, I guess, one cartouche. Um, and was that a Grisphoon I minused out as well? I can't even bloody well remember. One cartouche, one generous visitor, and one SRAM. All right, what do we got here? We got a... Well, the hands with Glade Cover Scout are going to be at a premium always. Uh, we have Mana Confluence, which is painful, but we have a good host of auras. Hopefully we top deck a non-painful land off the top of our library in the first two turns. It's going to make things a little bit easier if we do. That's not the land source we're looking for with this hand. Still, turn one Scout against their opponent, not a bad start. Sure, our opponent probably has cards like Ossification as well, interacting with our enchantments. We probably want to double first strike enchantment to block out Kithian, depending on what they do. Okay, they Thalia. Well, that's bad for us. We should have Srammed earlier on. 
Uh, okay. Well, I guess we play out a Glade Cover Scout. We block the Kithian. Uh, we hope to draw a mana and stabilize from there. I wanted to keep Mox Amber a secret, but against the Thalia deck, which we did talk about this card in sideboarding, it's definitely an oversight from me. Let's go up from our opponent into Harbin. All right. Hey, look, a land drop, and ouch, that's a painful land drop. I think we have to resolve, start resolving some auras, though, so unfortunately, I'm going to take the damage. We're going to go like that. We don't have great attacks. I guess our opponent can, like, scrub the Kithian, so really, we're better attacking here than not. Sure, we'll go with that. Our opponent could potentially have blocked there with the triple block. We would have lost our scout. We would have traded our scout for this thing, though, or our scout for, like, two other creatures. And probably we let them keep this one and then uh, trade with the two smaller creatures. Opponent just attacking with everything. This doesn't have soldier typing, does it? No, it's just, like, a Phyraxian filth monger. It's really annoying that when I, like up this card. Unless Phyraxian and triple dot is the actual wording. I don't even know if it has a secondary type. All right, so instant speed, buffing the Kithion. Can't be blocked by white. We can block here, we can block there. Currently taking seven, eight damage. Hmm. Well, we probably want like some description of damage control. We can trade off there, right? <clears throat> All right, that's not too bad. We hit a land drop. Land drop isn't amazing. Seven life, our opponent has a heck of a board state for next turn. We don't have access to any vigilance or anything. I just don't see how we win from here. Uh, like we play a two mana ethereal armor. We can't even, we can block a Denning. And we take four, five, six, seven damage wide. I mean, yeah, like, <laughs> just can't win, right? And this even puts a warrior tapped and attacking onto the battlefield. Portable hole. Well, yeah, that's, that's all the information I need. All right, so this is a more accurate list to what our opponent is doing and achieving. We can see interaction there in the form of Portable Hall. We can see a man land there in form of Mutavolt, which doesn't want to update for us. Isn't that lovely? Mutavolt's like the only land that doesn't want to load. Um, we talked about the Thalias before, Thrabian Inspectors, Thalia's Lieutenant, Strike Officer, Siege Re Veteran, Recruitment Officer. Uh, we saw Harbin a couple of times. Sideboard-wise, it's pretty much Brutal Cathar. Again, our opponent could have Ossification. We'll just have to wait and see. Given Portable Hole is a larger pattern part of our opponent's plan. Besaidu actually seems semi-reasonable. We do have a large number of these creatures. Possibly just Mox Amber out. Like, this doesn't seem like it's going to be the super fastest. Maybe one Mox Amber out. Doesn't seem like it's going to be, like, outrageously fast as far as matchups are concerned. The cartouche tokens actually seem relevant post-interaction as well. Portable Hull for us does actually answer a problem, and that problem is our opponent's Thalia. So I think Portable Hull is good enough. Probably minus on a Stram, minus on a Light Pause because we've brought in the Hushbringers. We might even minus on like the Forest and the Plains because they're not going to be super important here. And we're bringing in Besaidus. Besaidus, oh shit, I've got one extra Mox Amber than I needed in there. All right, we probably should have kept in the Plains instead of the second Mox Amber. But alas, slightly suboptimal. Sand seems really good though. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and keep this. This is fantastic. I'm going to make that mistake around Mox Amber again. We'll just damn that one straight away. Our opponent plays Kithian off this. Oh, that's cool that they made a soldier land. Honestly, I've got pretty mad respect for that. Mox Amber from our opponent. All right, this is their own tech as well. Into Skrull. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Razor Verge Thicket for us off the top. I think we Cartouche. 
I think our opponent doesn't want to block with either of these creatures. So it's probably a pretty reasonable time to Curious Obsession and just try and get that card draw happening. Uh, always yes, always yield. A Ganjo off the top honestly is not that bad. We don't have any legendary creatures currently, um, but we could deal with the Kithion in the future turn. Opponent concedes to like a 3-3. Three, three. I guess they're holding like creature interaction in the form of like Brutal Cathar and they just wanted to concede to this because we were far enough ahead. Maybe they were scared of land plus light paws plus an aura or something, but this seems like a premature um, tilt concession. Still, that's a really sweet deck. I have a lot of mad props for this soldier deck. It looks fun. Hopefully they're not too far in the losing bracket like I am at the moment at like an 0-3, but currently 1-3. We'll see if we can get these final uh, 50 play points back in the final match. Do hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Found it or an entertaining and or informative. A bit of a different one today. Um, be sure to let me know what you think in the comment section below. Uh, comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you then.